Every engine needs air, fuel and ignition for combustion. For a perfect combustion, we need 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel. This is called lambda one. Only when the quantities of air and fuel are exactly right in almost complete combustion and the optimal degree of efficiency is reached. If the mixture contains too much fuel, it is called a rich mixture where part of the fuel is not combusted. A mixture with excess air is called a lean mixture which also harms performance and emissions. In our case, we want a richer mixture than Lambda 1 for best power and safety during wide open throttle to get the max power out of the M50 manifold. Welcome to part 5 of this series, how to tune M50 manifold fueling. This is the second step that is required after you successfully completed the first step, Vanos tune. You could ask yourself the question, why is this even important, since the ECU will adapt via the short-term fuel trims and long-term fuel trims to the new airflow characteristic of the M50 manifold. Essentially, this is true. You could just run it without touching your fuel mats. However, from my experience, is that the ECU during closed-loop mode will heavily and aggressively control via the short-term fuel trims reported by the oxygen sensors towards lambda 1 or 14.7 to 1 stoichiometric ideal air fuel ratio, meaning that compared to the M52 manifold for which the base fuel map was designed for, with the M50 the base fuel map is not perfect anymore. What I mean by this is that the short-term fuel trims reported by the oxygen sensors to the ECU will be higher with the M50 manifold and thus causing also a higher deviation in the long-term fuel trims. Now this is not ideal because during wide open throttle the long-term fuel trims are still into effect and this can cause issues in fueling possibly causing momentarily too rich condition which is noticeable as a cutout or bog or even worse a too lean condition which may have have the same symptoms but also can damage your engine. The main objective of our fine-tuning the base fuel map is more or less to bring it back to stoichiometric ideal lambda 1 air fuel ratio 14.7 to 1 so that the reported short-term fuel trims are close to zero thus also that the long-term fuel trims will be close to zero as well in order that we can really also have a reliable wide open throttle fueling without any interference of any long-term fuel trim reported values. There's a couple of ways you can go about this tuning of the base fuel map. I'm going to touch on two of the three methods that I am aware of. The first one would be logging with a wide band lambda at non wide open throttle conditions, which means park throttle for the base fuel map tuning. Now I haven't done this personally yet. It can be an option if you have such a sensor and are experienced in analyzing the logs with the wide band and filtering out the conditions for this. The best method in my opinion for a beginner or someone who's not doing this professionally and just doing it as a hobby and for fun like I am basically is logging without the wide band and using the reported short-term fuel trims via the ECU. This is a method that I found out while reading lots of posts in the ROM Rider forum. There is a sticky thread about fuel tuning methods and how to go about it. I highly suggest to read this thread if you're interested in tuning MS-41 and the fueling tables yourself. So a big thanks and credit to all those guys who came up with these methods that we can try them out for ourselves. So just to show you the process of fine-tuning the base fuel map, I'm going to do a brief overview of how I do it. In order to keep the video short, I may go into a, another round of fuel tuning videos where I do show it in detail. The process what I do is I load my CSV log file into Mega Log Viewer HD, which is a tool for tuning, analyzing data logs, and I find it very useful for that, and generate a histogram of load STFT RPM and tune the base map to the averaged out values of the reported STFT's values. After you fine-tune your base fuel map with this short-term fuel trim tuning method, you can tackle your wide open throttle fuel tuning. For this, I am logging with a wide band O2 sensor at wide open throttle conditions, analyzing the reported values and then adjusting the wide open throttle enrichment map in the MS-41 ECU. For max power, you should somewhere be between 
12.6 to 1 and 13 to 1 AFR or lambda 0 0.86 to 0 0.9 but this heavily depends on your individual setup and what your engine actually likes. Here I can show you a little bit more detail of what I actually do and how. This shows the loaded log in Mega Log Viewer HD. And once you have loaded the log, you need to create a table. And for this, you need to specify the X axis as load and the Y axis as RPM. And these values should correspond exactly to the base fuel map X and Y axis values as well. Then for the Z axis, you choose either STFT1 or STFT2. Those will vary. The engine M52 has two pre-cat oxygen sensors on bank one and bank two, which will report slightly different values. So once you have loaded the log values from one STFT, in this case STFT1, you actually need to filter out transient and wide open throttle conditions. Since in closed loop mode, base fuel map is designed for steady throttle. What do I mean by transient conditions? Transient conditions are any high or fast RPM change, change in load, deceleration, acceleration, which affect the base fuel map. The ECU has many other factors that come into play when decelerating or accelerating that multiply values to the base fuel map. In order to get the correct values, you need to filter those conditions out. It means when you do a long drive logging, make sure you keep the throttle steady as possible in the different areas of the map. Mainly you're concerned about the cruising area, which is in this case here, low to mid RPM to mid low load. And in this section here is the higher speed during highway driving. There is some areas of the map like the upper right and lower left where it is very difficult to get good data just because you will not be in those driving conditions really or it's difficult to get the engine or the, the car into those conditions. For example, on the top right, it requires starting in a very high gear from low speeds and on the lower left, it's more or less deceleration tables. But the main middle section, this is what you're concerned with. This is the normal driving conditions where you will be situated. And if the long-term fuel trim values are between plus or minus two to three percent, you can pretty much call your base fuel map good and stop. However, the basic rule here is also the longer drives you do with the more data and the more repetitions you do in tuning this map, the better the result will get and will get you closer to zero with the long-term fuel trends. However, getting them exactly to zero with no deviations is not possible just because of the ambient conditions and other factors involved. There is another method where you can turn off your long-term fuel trim values in the ECU so they don't affect your wide open throttle fuel map. However, for a beginner tuner, I would recommend leaving the long-term fuel trims on just because they're a good indication of your base fuel map settings and how good it is actually tuned. Because if you have them turned off and you don't regularly log or monitor the driving parameters, there is a risk that something perhaps will cause your fuel map to be off and then you have no indication and the ECU has limited capabilities adjusting via the short-term fuel trims only. After the park throttle main base fuel map is set, you can start with wide open throttle fuel tuning. band and do a wide open throttle run in a high gear like third gear from low speeds all the way to red line this way you get good data filled in your map and have better tuning possibilities again for best power you're looking somewhere between 12.6 and 13.0 afr and lambda 0.86 to 0.9 once you've done these steps park throttle base fuel map and wide open throttle fueling your job is done with tuning the fueling tables and you can move on to the Next and final step with this mission advanced spark advanced table where the most gain in power potential lies.